One of the great psalms of the Psalter is Psalm 1. And I would like to just do a very brief uh, overview, commentary of Psalm 1, exposition from the Hebrew, focusing on a literary development that I think is rather striking in verses 3 and 4, what I call the long and short uh, of those two verses. But if we would do a basic exposition in the first three verses, we are looking at the way of the godly. And in verses four to six, the way of the ungodly, or the way of the wicked uh, in the book of Hebrew, or, or in, in the Tehillim. It begins, Ashrei ha'ish, asher lo halak be'etzat resha'im, so verse 1 begins, Happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked ones, nor stand in the way of habitual covenant breakers, nor sits in the seat of the scornful or the mockers. Here we see three things that the happy man does not do. And we see what I would call a decline here. Uh, he begins to basically listen to the advice of those that are wicked. And then he takes a more firm stand, standing on the road where habitual covenant breakers stand, which is the meaning of the Hebrew here, chataim. Uh, and finally, he sits in the seat of the scornful. He becomes one who scorns and who criticizes uh, the things of the Lord. He takes the role of a teacher. So we see a falling away here, a what we might call a total apostasy from God's truth. But the, the, the happy man does not do that. But, and here we have a sharp contrast in verse 2. <speaking in Hebrew> But his delight is in the Torah of the Lord, the instruction of the Lord. And in his Torah, he constantly mumbles under the breath. Haga means to mumble. He uh, sort of uh, the Torah day and night under the breath. And so he continues to love to be in the word of God. And he is meditating on it uh, by mumbling on it day and night. It is interesting. This is something that I believe believers and as a Christian minister, I encourage uh, people to spend time in the word of God, to meditate on it daily. And it's interesting in the Hebrew, it says, and in his Torah, he mumbles day and night. Torah to, by the way, it was interesting that Rashi, a medieval Jewish commentator, uh, said, if you meditate in the Torah day and night, Yomam Belayla, it will become Torah T, it will become my Torah. And I'm reminded of Paul, even in the New Testament, where he spoke of the Evangelion as my gospel. And so, as we spend time in the Word of God, it becomes our possession, so to speak, and how important that is to delight, to be there, is what the godly uh, person does. Then in verse 3, we have what the godly person is like. In other words, he shall be as a tree, Shatul means transplanted by streams of water, whose his fruit he customarily gives, yitain, in its season, and its leaf never ever withers, and all that he does is resulting in spiritual uh, prosperity. We're not talking about physical prosperity, but spiritual prosperity here from the person who meditates in God's word. Notice the text, I call this the long, and verse 4, the short. 
because in verse 3, <clears throat> this is what the godly man meditating on the Torah is like. He's like a tree that's been transplanted from an arid region to a well-watered region of God's Torah, where his soul is watered by the eternal streams of God's word. And his leaf never, ever withers, like an ever, can I say, blooming uh, evergreen tree. And whatsoever he does is cause to prosper. Now notice the contrast, though, between that, from a literary perspective, you just go on and on. It's an elongated statement in verse 3, contrasted with a short statement in verse 4. It reads, Lo chen harashi'in, ki im kamot sa'asher tedefen ruach. That is, what can you say about the wicked? You can't talk about fruitfulness. You can't talk about leaves that continue to be there and not wither. Uh, the wicked are like chaff that the wind just drives away. And the farmer in the ancient world would take, <coughs> once the wheat was harvested, and throw the wheat and the chaff mixed together into the air, and the wind would blow the chaff away. And so the chaff has no permanent fruitfulness. It's blown away by the wind. And he's likening that to the ungodly, to those that don't uh, follow the Torah, who have no time for it. They, what do you say? I mean, there's not much to say. They, are, they become fruitless. And so in verse 4, we just have a very short statement. And I have spoken of the long statement versus the short. And I think there's a point we could say in a literary way being made here that the godly person who's willing to meditate in God's word becomes fruitful all through life. Whereas the person who is ungodly that does not do that is blown away like chaff. And, and when you contrast chaff, with the fruitfulness of a tree transplanted whose roots are being watered by constant streams. What a contrast is being made here. And therefore he concludes, <laughs> Wherefore the wicked will not arise, is the way I'm understanding Yakumu, in the final judgment, nor sinners, covenant breakers, in the congregation of the righteous. Hebrew parallelism here. At the final judgment, the uh, ungodly, the wicked, will not be able to stand and declare innocency. But the righteous will be able to, the psalmist is saying, Ki yudea adonai derek sadikim, but derek reshaim tovei. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. What a beautiful conclusion here. The Lord knows intimately the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. And I think one of the most important things that we can do is spend time in the Word of God. Uh, from a Christian perspective, uh, to spend time in the Word, Paul says, it makes you wise into salvation, which is in Jesus Christ, by meditating on the scriptures. One of the things that we need today is more of an emphasis in study of God's word, and can we say application. I think we, we see often everything else occupies one's time. But if we delight in the Torah Adonai, then every day we want to be there, and we can be, sure, be reassured of the fruitfulness of such meditation because the Lord, can I say, knows or embraces that way over against the way of the ungodly. What a beautiful uh, short psalm with intensive meaning about the importance of the Torah Adonai, the law of the Lord or the, word, the teaching of the Lord in Holy Scripture.